This building has a mind of its own. In summer, these solar chimneys help hot air escape, while cool air is pulled into the building from underneath. In winter, the bricks and cladding of these walls help create warmth inside, while power from both the wind and the sun creates energy for heating, cooling, lighting and power. Even the long narrow design of the building means more natural light can penetrate further into the offices and hallways, meaning less reliance on artificial lighting. It's a facility like no other in the Southern Hemisphere. The Energy Centre, which is the headquarters for CSIRO Energy Technology and the Energy Transform flagship, was established as a research centre to provide solutions to the critical issues of climate change. And in order to practice what they preach, a remarkably innovative and ecologically sustainable facility was created. By responding to the environment and the use of clever design, it not only saves energy, it creates most of the energy it needs to function. Since climate change has become part of our vernacular, we have all learned to take shorter showers, turn off lights and recycle. But this is no longer enough. The innovations in the energy centre buildings not only use renewable power, they are smart enough to take over when human occupants forget. This building can tell when to automatically switch to its natural ventilation system, taking advantage of hot air rising from the lower part of the room. Usually air conditioning vents are in the ceiling or high on the wall, cooling the top part of the room where nobody sits. Here, an underfloor system creates microclimates in the floor, cooling the area of the room that is occupied. Stairwells act as solar chimneys, continually drawing hot air from the office and lab wings and expelling it from the building through pop-up vents on the roof and louver windows. Also, all windows open manually to let in fresh air. The system uses 75% less energy than a standard office. Because of safety codes, air in the laboratories cannot be recirculated. This means 100% fresh air needs to be pumped in from outside. When the used air is sucked back out, it passes through a heat exchanger that removes any energy it retains. This energy is transferred into fresh air from outside and is used to either heat or cool the air to 22 degrees Celsius. During summer, when the sun sits higher in the sky and shines on the top half of the wing, the specially designed cladding materials reflect the heat, so the air conditioner doesn't have to work as hard. In winter, when the sun sits low in the sky, it shines on the lower section of the wing and the sun comes in under the louvers warming the building. Use of the natural environment means a more temperate climate. In summer, the moisture on the foliage of these plants evaporates, helping to cool the building. In winter, the garden mulch creates heat. Because of the shape and orientation of the building, the sun lights office interiors whenever possible, so there is less reliance on artificial lighting. Light shelves act like light fittings, using the sun as a lamp. Sunlight hits the white surface and reflects light onto the ceiling, then down into the room. Automatic lighting control systems ensure that energy efficient lights automatically turn on and adjust only when needed. This photoelectric cell measures the amount of natural light coming into the room and determines when artificial lighting is needed. Motion detectors on the ceilings sense movement in the room. If after around 10 minutes no human activity can be detected, lights are automatically turned off. Lighting in the office wing uses 90% less energy than a conventional office. As well as saving energy, the energy centre creates energy, supplying most of the power it needs. The roof of the library has building integrated photovoltaic or solar cells, not only providing energy, but acting as a waterproof membrane for the area. These titania disolar cells on the western facade are the world's first commercial installation of the next generation of solar cell technology. They contain a coloured dye which acts in the same efficient way as plants in harvesting sunlight. 
monocrystalline silicon cells are used as roof tiles on the office roof, laboratory roof and facade of the process bays, while polycrystalline cells are clipped to the auditorium roof. The integrated solar arrays on the site produce a maximum of 90 kilowatts of electricity, enough energy to power 40 to 60 houses. A 60 kilowatt wind turbine system uses small and large turbines which have been positioned to make the best use of the wind. They respond to the climate to take advantage of the most favourable wind conditions. These renewable energy sources are supplemented by a highly efficient 120 kilowatt microgas turbine cogeneration plant. The primary function of the plant is to supply heating for the entire site via an integrated hot water system and as a byproduct generates low emissions electricity. Micro turbines, essentially a jet engine in a box, each produce 60 kilowatts of energy. They provide heat for the buildings during winter and enough power to run 100% of the site. So many different elements go into making the centre not only energy efficient, but energy creating, that it needs an efficient management system. All on-site energy distribution and automatic functions are controlled by a sophisticated building management system. But it's no use having all these energy saving devices if the humans who occupy the centre don't know how to utilise it to its maximum capacity. So a big part of the buildings working properly is education. The energy centre saves approximately 2,000 tonnes of CO2 annually which is the equivalent of taking 700 cars off our roads each year. Mirrors, hundreds of them, reflect the sun's light to a reactor that sits on a 26 metre tower at the National Solar Energy Centre. This concentration of solar rays heats the reactor to temperatures of over 800 degrees Celsius. When natural gas and water are pumped into the reactor, the chemical reaction produces solar gas a way of capturing solar energy, which can be stored or used directly for power generation. It is the largest high concentration solar array in the Southern Hemisphere. Australia's primary power source for the foreseeable future is coal-fired generation, which has always been one of the largest contributors of greenhouse gases. So the development of low emission coal technologies is vital. When coupled with CO2 sequestration, post-combustion capture has the potential to substantially reduce greenhouse gases and offers the potential for near zero emissions. It will be able to capture more than 85% of CO2 before it enters the atmosphere. Currently, most commercially available photovoltaic or solar cells are made from silicon, but because silicon needs to be pure, it is expensive. Plastic or organic solar cells would be lighter, more flexible, more attractive and more affordable. They could also potentially be sheet printed like newspapers, allowing a factory to produce in hours the same area of cells that a conventional silicon wafer factory produces in a year. But while organic materials show enormous potential, they present a number of technical challenges, which the Energy Centre is working to overcome. The Energy Centre is a showcase for the very latest Australian and international research collaboration in saving energy and creating new renewable energy sources. It is finding solutions for us all, in both our homes and industry, in an effort to eliminate greenhouse gas production and stop the clock on climate change. <laughs>